Race 9 headed to Sebring International Raceway in Tampa, Florida for the running of the Busch Gardens 400. Benjamin Miles led on the pole. We were going to get it started from the looks of it, but obviously after crossing the start-finish line, these drivers have not caught up to speed. Well, it's because we had a bit of a problem right on the start of the race, before the race could even begin, as you see the pace car had to come back out. And here's why we had a we had a slow start. Jasmine Acosta and everybody else got held up on the start of the race. I'm not sure how that would ever ever happen in a caution like this and I'm pretty sure that I guess they probably took a corner wrong and I guess slowed up by accident or someone must have hold them up or something but either way the start was delayed because of that incident with Jasmine Acosta and everybody else it would take Acosta a while but she would come have to come back to the back of the pack and a tough start for Jasmine Acosta the 22 right off the bat not even completing a first lap and Jasmine Acosta and a couple of other drivers already have problems in the race from the even not before the green flag could even wave and after that little scene the green flag finally did come out at Sebring like I said Miles led the way to the pole but right off the first corner he got too loose says he got spun on the first corner Luke Walker also also got loose everybody else did too I mean Tony Green was involved as well Zeke Marley spun here's a battle for position I think this is for fourth it's Abby Sachs battling against Jacob Lawler two powerhouses of the Pokemon Cup series battling side by side once again this time in a new track at Sebring in Florida in Tampa Bay and it's sure fun as well because right off the bat we have ourselves first caution of the race on the very first lap of this eventful start of a race Sacks would clear the 70 to 44 and PJ Williams who made it out through all that carnage led to the caution Roman Rahal Jordan Davis didn't even get to take the green flag they had to come down pit road before the before the start of the race because of the damage they had from Jasmine Acosta it looked like there were a lot more drivers that took the first corner too wide and the pace car didn't even get to s set up his set up its tires on rest its tires when the caution had to come out and, he, and the pace car had to come in. Anyway, Zeke Marley spun, as you see right there, off that corner, and Isaiah Bernash made contact with the 98 of Marley. And the pace car really trying to navigate through this massive, massive carnage that is the first lap. Here's more carnage Jordan Newman in the 29, Tony Green, and Sean Harple. Got loose off on the S curves, and Deion Scott didn't make it easier as well. And Kyle Collins, he got loose on the corner. This was all happening on the very first lap of the race. I mean, already on the start, it's a very eventful, probably one of the most eventful starts we've ever had in a Pokemon Cup race. We had, we didn't even get to get a good start on that with Jasmine Acosta. Now all hell breaks loose on the very first lap. Leia Walker, you saw spin. And Chris Washer, even he couldn't avoid the incident as Benjamin Miles, you saw on top. He... Pat spun for a second time. Sean Harple, oh, he got right into Washer, and Navarro didn't help him at all. Deion Scott Acosta again, and Luke Walker involved in the spin. Man, what an eventful very first lap of the race. That was all on the first lap. Could you believe it? Anyway, Benjamin Miles, Chris Washer started in front of the leaders, and Miles took advantage of it, taking the lead away on the restart. Jackie Tang moves up to second, but it was not long until we have our second caution. This was a complete wreck fest throughout. Tony Green went up in smoke after uh, crashing on the final corner. Then you see Mason Powers and the 71. Alex Hawkins also get involved as well. They both spun on the corner. Wow. And that's not all, by the way. Mitchell Riggs. Contact with Dylan Young and Riggs is spinning. He spun out half on down to the straightaway. The pace car came out for the restart, but Jackie Tang wasn't able to make it to the green flag on the restart. He had to come down pit road. The 24 also had to pit early as well. That would hand the lead over to Abby Sachs. And as you see there, Stephen Poehler III tried to took advantage of the 10 of PJ Williams by battling him for second. Then there's Angel Navarro and Jacob Lawler moving up to the top five. 
Kohler the 30 got a better start and he would take the second spot away. The 10 PJ Williams would not have a good run on this lap as you see Nathan Hudson battling with Jacob Lawler, 43 against 44. And despite spinning earlier, Kyle Collins is now competing for a top 10 spot. I'm not sure how he was able to come back from a spin and compete for a top 10. But here is another wreck Ian Dutt has involved Kyle Singer, Roman Rahal. All heck breaks loose with just almost 10 laps to go and Dylan Thoreau not helping his case and Polar the third. He had a bit of problems battling for second with Abby Sachs. He got loose on this corner from second. He was running in second when he spun out with Jacob Lawler and a tough break for him. His day was ruined by that corner spin. Only eight laps to go in this eventful race in Sebring. Austin LaPlante pitted. No, Austin LaPlante took the lead after everybody else pitted. Pit stops were pretty much a factor here in this race, and not to mention surviving from all the carnage we had today. And speaking of carnage, PJ Williams not making it easier on LaPlante. He takes the lead away now in the corner. He didn't get a good run earlier. Now he's got a better run today. And LaPlante and the 10, Williams would pull away to the lead. And as you see Connor Breen trying to battle for second against Austin LaPlante. Nathan Hudson following suit, Kyle Collins as well. Collins moves up to the top five, could you believe it? And now he's moving on up, he could be moving up to third. As you see Collins goes on the bottom, trying to pass the 43 of Hudson. Trying to make a battle down the long straightaway, down the corner. A lot of turns in Sebring. This track hosted the 24 hour race from Entertown 3 with a lot of Entertown 3 famous YouTubers all around the world. And Sebring, well, right here for Pole One Cup, it has been a very eventful race. Collins took third, but Hudson would keep fourth despite a hard charge from Austin LaPlante. And once again, caution came out, we're not even going to show you the wreck because it's pretty much the same old, same old. Anyway, five laps to go. Kyle Collins, he's trying to complete his comeback, takes the lead away from the 15, Connor Breen. Connor Breen, something is wrong on the 15. He is really slow coming off the corner. In fact, he drops out of the top five, and he might even drop out of the top ten as well. Just a tough break for him. Oh no, Johnny Garner got hit by Tristan Bolt in the corner. Miles wrecking in the back as well. That would definitely bring out yet another caution. Like this is like what the fourth time we've ever ha we've had a caution today. My goodness, a wreck fest again. Can't stress that enough. Anyway, the five James Shelley would move on up, and Breen's day went from bad to worse. He spun out on near the start finish line of the final turn. So did James Shelley. He got hit by the 33 Dylan Young and Ian Dunn. And nowhere to go. He gets himself hit as well. Sean Harpel had contact with him as well. Wow, Breen and Shelley, both veterans, not having a great time here at Sebring. Two laps to go, things would get really, really strange as the pace car didn't even get to pit road. He just holds up everybody else despite the green flag waving. It only applies to the cars in the back, but for some reason the pace car never entered pit road during the final stretch of green. I'm not sure why that happened. Honestly, I have no clue why. But again, after pit stops, juggling everybody from the field, Stephen Poehler III would retake the lead. The pace car would still not get into pit road for whatever reason. It's a massive glitch, and I apologize for that. And Hudson, he couldn't avoid it. He got right loose on the corner, spun himself out, and he could blame the pace car for that. I couldn't blame him because the pace car was in the way of many of these drivers. They're not allowed to... Go behind the pace car. Well, if they go behind it, well, someone just went through it. Never mind. So, anyway, we would have a great battle for the caution. Yes, the caution did come out later. Jacob Lawler took the lead. Polar the third actually ran out of field just before the final corners of the race. But then the 44 would run out of fuel as well. And the 71 who was trying to compete for third, he would run out of fuel as well. It's a mad dash to the finish down the final corner of the track. We know the race will end under caution. Here comes Mason Powers. He was he went through a damage in the rear. And now coming off the final corner, he's going to make an ultimate comeback and take the possibly the checkered flag here at Sebring. He took the white flag under caution. And what a comeback for Mason Powers. A lot of trial and error. He had to go through many, many wrecks at Sebring. 
but boy did Mason Powers he was able to survive thanks to drivers dropping out because they ran out of fuel. Coming off the final corner, Mason Powers collects his first career NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series win in the Busch Gardens 400 at Sebring, Florida in Tampa Bay. Wow, what an eventful race. We had cautions, crazy pace cart, hijinks, crazy driver hijinks, just the works. If you like Wreckfests, this was the race for you all the way. And Nick Alton, the winner from Lime Rock Park, got his second podium in a row in a road course, finishing second. RJ Bishop rounded up the podium in third. Dan Coffey and Ert Powers, Mason's dad, finished in fifth. So both Powerses actually got top fives from Sebring. But I would consider that very lucky since everybody else, someone or in some way or another, got wrecked and damaged somehow. So they got lucky. And Mason Powers collects his first career Pullman Cup win. And of all places, Sebring International Raceway. We're obviously not going to go back to the track after this season. But next race is a new track at the annual Mud Bowl at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll see you then. Get down and dirty.